if you could remain standing, we'll sing our doxology. seated. Our prayer of praise, thanksgiving, oh sorry I'm wrong, uh, we're going to read together our call to worship. Thanks Ross. And so we'll if you read with me on this, please. Isaiah 12 is, this week is the psalm, not from this book of Psalms, but from Isaiah chapter 12. Let's read together. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is to be exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world, Shout aloud and sing for joy, the people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. We'll stand and sing our hymn, our hymn of praise, Glory Be to God the Father.
Let us make our prayers of thanks and confession. Holy are you, loving God, all honour, praise and glory are yours. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. We give you thanks and praise for who you are and for your faithfulness that never ends. Bless us with the desire to have you to be the transforming power in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you have bestowed on our lives. You have provided us with more than we could ever have imagined. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. You protect us from those things that might harm us. You provide us with wise advisors to help us with life's difficult decisions. Bless us, Father, with the ability and sense to show how much others matter and to show kindness even as we have received it. Father, despite all you have given and all you have done for us through your life and death, and despite the beauty of our world, we confess that we still have times of resentment and irritation about the things that don't go our own way. Forgive our selfish desires and our unwillingness to recognise the rights of others. Centre us, Lord, on you so we might allow your love to transform our selfishness into love for others. We pray in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. John declares of God, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. Thanks be to God. To him, great is your faithfulness. We worship an eternally faithful God.
We are now to have our readings. Uh, it was a reported, I think, in last week's bulletin that Dorothy Carter would be reading today, but unfortunately, both uh, Dorothy and Graham have contracted COVID. So Peter, who is our prayer leader for today, is also our reader. So Peter's going to be doing that for us. We're reading first from Luke 21, 5 to 19. And the shape of this um, reading is interesting. It begins with a remark by one of the disciples. And Jesus uses that remark to make a prophecy. Jesus doesn't make a lot of prophecies, but this is one that he does make. And then as a result of the prophecy, one of the disciples asks a question. But if you look scripture you'll find that many times when people ask Jesus questions he doesn't quite answer it's not, he's not a politician he, uh, he, he doesn't just avoid it but he says he's, he's like saying hang on that's is that the right question here's the, the question I think you should have been asking and I'll answer that and I, I think this is what happens in this uh, in this first reading and then i would like you to listen to the the that teaching part because in that jesus gives three very clear instructions i want you to listen for the instructions because i want to talk about those uh, later then we all have a second reading but peter's going to come and i'm going to uh, play my part and be a if I can find the piece you gave me. <laughs> Thanks. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, these are the things you're looking at. The days are coming when not one stone will be left on another stone. All will be demolished. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? Jesus replied, Take care not to be misled, for many will come using my name, saying, I am he, and it's time, don't follow after them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, don't be terrified, for these things must happen first, but the end does not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and plagues in various places. There will be terrifying portents and huge signs in the sky. But before all these happen, people will apprehend and hand you over to the councils and to prison. They will bring you before kings and rulers on account of my name, and this will result in your bearing witness. Therefore, keep firmly in mind that you are not to re rehearse beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I myself will give you words and wisdom such that no one who is against you will be able to gain say. You will be betrayed both by parents and brothers and sisters and relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death and you will be hated by them. Not a hair of your head will be lost. You will win your lives by your endurance. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians, written by Paul to the people of Thessalonica. And it's a, a, an encouraging reading, but it's not the reason I, I'm speaking now. Peter's going to read this from the J.B. Phillips translation 
of the New Testament. I don't know about some of you others my age and older, uh, but I was turned upside down by J.B. Phillips' writings in the, in the early 50s. We'd been only the King James Version to, to work on. And uh, I struggled with that, I've got to say. But then when J.B. Phillips' translation came out, it suddenly began to dawn on me it's to make sense. And so I've gone back to it often to use it. And I chose uh, the, our next reading, and it is from 2 Thessalonians 4, 1 to 5. Actually, Dick, it's chapter 3, 1 to 5. But 3, 1 to 5. Sorry. No, that's not a problem between friends. And can I second uh, Dick's uh, comments about the J.B. Phillips transactions? One of the um, best translations I've ever had the pleasure to read and uh, sort of try and criticise with my knowledge of the original Greek. It's a great read uh, to go through. Anyway, here we are. Paul writes, Finally, my brothers, do pray for us here. Pray that the Lord's message may go forward unhindered and may bring him glory as it has done with you. Pray too that we may not be embroiled and with bigoted and wicked men, for all men, alas, have not faith. Yet the Lord is utterly to be depended upon by all who have faith in him, and he will give you stability and protection against all that is evil. It is he who makes us feel confident about you, that you are acting and will act in accordance with our commands. May the Lord guide your hearts into ever deeper understanding of his love and of the patient suffering of Christ. For the word of God, scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God, us, we, we give, give thanks. thanks. Thanks, Peter, for bringing us those readings. We all begin now to look at that, those readings uh, that came. First of all, the reading from um, uh, Luke, the Luke's Gospel. It's a passage that was given in response, you remember, to that prophecy about the destruction of the temple which they must have thought it was absolutely stupid. Here was this wonderful temple. Who was going to destroy that? How could it be done? It, it was described as being a huge structure, of course, but uh, it also was mostly white. When it wasn't, gold, and mo most of the decorations were in gold. It says that one was made out of gold and mounted on the walls and they were as big as a man so they weren't small amounts of gold these were huge amounts and these were amazing to the people how could this be destroyed and of course they didn't have to wait very long most of those people would have seen in their lifetime that it was destroyed of terrible destruction and terrible persecution but Jesus' teaching, I don't think, is only about the destruction of the temple. It's word for every day, as most of Jesus' teaching is. It's for any time when things seem to go, what would people would say, belly up. It seems to me that if things are going wrong, then... These teachings apply. Have you faced these situations yourself? Have you faced breakdown in family? Have you experienced personal trauma? Have you, some soldiers have experienced return from wars, and terrible stuff. But I think these are the times when we need to listen to this reading again and find out the things that Jesus is saying. He begins, if you remember hearing it, 
with the first, just about the first thing he says in verse 8, watch out that you are not deceived. It's the first piece of teaching. Watch out that you're not deceived. It's so easy to be conned. Look around the world and you know what's going on. People are easily conned. But he says, hang on, make sure you're not deceived. The FBI in America, when they are training their agents, uh, give them one of the one of the tasks is to keep a, a watch out for counterfeit currency. And so they have to know what they're looking for. But they don't train them by looking at counterfeit currency. They train them by looking at the real thing. They spend hours and hours studying every little section of the notes. Every part is studied thoroughly, with the feel of it ever, even. And, and one agent says, we get to know the real thing so well, so thoroughly, that it's easy to spot the fake. And they are taught the key to knowing falsehood is knowing the truth. How are we deceived? By going right back to the basis of our faith, to Jesus himself. And so Jesus says to many of his Jewish friends, know the truth and the truth will set you free. What do we do to focus our attention on Jesus, the truth? There are not many ways, but carefully. But I think sometimes we do it when we do it together, when we that we are hearing the words carefully spoken and spoken by others who trust those words. But you know, Jesus was tempted too. And he was tempted to be led astray, to be deceived. The evil one, if you like, in our, in our passage uh, from says let the Lord uh, yet the Lord is utterly to be dependent upon by all who have faith in him and he will give you stability and protection against all that is evil and some would say the evil one the devil, whatever you like to call it. The devil, wherever he is and however he appears. But he has a particular way of working. He follows certain steps. If you follow Jesus' uh, temptations, you look at... The devil has a particular way of working. There seem to be three steps. The first is that he disputes God's word. That he, he, he will want to uh, say, hang on a minute, is that what was really said? Just, are you sure? Just enough to raise our doubt. But then... Once our doubt is raised, he denies God's word. No, no, that's not what was said. And when we've been sucked in by that, he then displaces God's word. He says, no, nothing to do with that. You need this. And we've lost the basis of our faith. Our epistle said is utterly 
to be depended upon by all who have faith in him. And that is how we know the truth and how we can avoid being deceived. The second thing Jesus says is, and he says it often in scripture, and it's said, I've been told it's said 365 times in scripture, do not be afraid. Don't be terrified. And we're in danger of that. It's so easy to run into fear when we have a, a family difficulty or somebody we know in trouble, but we're afraid for them. No, not afraid. Do not be terrified. Um, listen to what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. This is in. Do not be afraid. I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You, can, you need to hang on to that. That we are actually called by God and he knows our names and he calls us. In our Kids Hope program, one of the very first things we taught is that we call our a way of making a relationship, building a relationship. We call them by name. As they say, many kids only hear their name shouted at them or complained about or misused. But we call them by their name because we love them, we want to care for them, and they begin to feel cared for when we know their name. That doesn't mean be, being not being afraid doesn't mean to say that we don't face up to the real dangers and things that are happening. We need to know what's happening in our world. We need to know what's happening somewhere. We've got to know, but we've also got to be sure of our basis so that when we hear these terrible things that are happening, Another warning, I guess, about that is stay away from people who want to tell us the bad. There are so many who want to tell you only the bad things. You have to be with them, then go armed with the truth. Go armed with faith. The third thing that Oh, uh, yeah. So we don't be deceived, first of all. Don't be terrified. Don't be afraid. And the third one is don't be distracted. Nation will rise against nation. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But don't be distracted. The reason we, we're not to be distracted is that... This, Jesus said, is our opportunity to bear witness, to, to testify to what is true and what is solid and unmovable. And so you will bear testimony to me. Make up your mind not to worry beforehand about how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words and wisdom. And this is what we are able to testify. Our God is a God who is solid as a rock, and it's on that rock that we have built our lives, and we can testify to that, not in any arrogant way, but just saying, Yes, this God I know does call you by name. He wants to know you and build a relationship with you in just the same way as he does with his people. And we do, we do this 
with openness and gentleness. Too often, testimony or witness is seen as something bursting out. We don't need a whole lot of words. We need just the simplest touch, a hug, a word of love, but always going back to the basis for our love, Jesus himself. Uh, toward the end of Paul's life, he was in prison. And this was, he'd been in a number of prison a number of times. Some was just open prison. Some was, some, some of the times he was actually uh, in house arrest. But this was fair dinkum. He was in the dungeon, chained. And life, the death was very close. But he writes a letter to Timothy, whom he calls my son in the faith. And he wants to encourage him. And so he writes to Timothy and says that God's way is, is to put aside our fears, telling us that he, and these are Paul's words, has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, we know that you want us to trust you but we confess that we often fall into fear and doubt. Please guide our thoughts toward what is good and holy. Please help us to seek your calm in the midst of our fears. Thank you for your faithfulness and your constant presence. Help us to focus our minds and our hearts on the hope you offer us in which you call us to share. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We just stand and sing the hymn 474. And after the hymn, uh, we'll have announcements. <laughs>
Now, um, a few announcements. Uh, you're going to take these, Peter? Yep. Good. I have just, I've told you about Dorothy and, uh, and Graham. Are there any other people we know that are not well? Um, I would like to, at some stage to meet with the Kids Hope prayer partners. It won't be today, but in the next week or so, we'd like to get together and share. And uh, I'm told that Matthew Kay, our MAF friend, uh, is in Arnhem Land now training. And uh, if you uh, made a pledge to help with that, if you could get that money to me sometime. Thanks. And Peter Norman had a 90th birthday. So we say happy birthday to Peter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he can do nothing about it. <laughs> Dear Laurie, out of your hands, best wishes for that one. Uh, first of all, in our announcements, uh, can I say thank you to Dick for leading our service today. <laughs> and in, in the best tradition of being civil, uh, can I say nice coat, Dick? <laughs> A um, couple of announcements. Um, first of all, Sue Lyons would like us to emphasise um, the Potted Palms Salon Players will be here um, on the 4th of December 2022 at 2 p.m. Uh, we can enjoy an afternoon of favourite light classical and evergreen music, followed by afternoon tea. Uh, and for the privilege of that, the entry fee is $15. That's uh, the Potted Palms Salon Players, 4th December at 2 p.m. Uh, can I also mention, um, uh, some of you may remember that there is a state election on the 26th of November. Yes, okay, uh, we're running the traditional barbecue out in the, uh, the uh, open, uh, the, uh, the forecourt there, uh, and helpers are sought. Uh, there'll be a sheet in the, uh, the hall uh, which you can sign up, uh, you can sign up for helping uh, at the barbecue on that sheet after the service. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Mayor Culpa, Mayor Max and the Culpa, that was me who put that in. I thought I'd better put it in rather than not. <laughs> Fine, no coffee and chat on Tuesday. Sorry about that, people. Uh, are there any more announcements to be made? Oh, yeah, Heather. David. Thanks, Peter. I think Ross is coordinated to show us a couple of lovely slides. I don't know if you recognize these Indian cards that are made at the Banyan Tree community in Kerala by Tom Sutherland's group. Uh, Tom's not there in Kerala now. He's actually in Port Ferry, and Nancy and I caught up with him a couple of weeks ago, and he's alive and well and upright as ever. And that's his sister Ruth, with whom he lives, and he continues to sell and provide these cards. And that's, uh, of course, Nancy next to them. She's looking well too. Um, I've got the cards on the second table outside today. They're $4 each. And they're worth about 10. Um, and they're handmade by these very poor ladies in the Banyan community in Kerala. I believe 30% uh, of people in India live on 500 rupees a day, which is about equivalent to about $8 Australian. And uh, Tom works amongst the poorest of that group with his friend back home, uh, his brother Philip, his name is. 
So if you need, these are actually designated Christmas cards. There are also cards on the other table, just to confuse you, that Leslie is selling again, which are gift cards for Christmas from Tia Fund. And they're various types of cards and different prices. But it's the card season, isn't it? So go for it. Thanks, David. Have we got anybody else who's got something to tell us? Right then, let's join together in our prayers of the people. Let us pray. Loving God, you are revealed with us. Remind us of your solidarity with us in all the difficulties of our lives. Strengthen our confidence in you so that we may act with wisdom and grace. Assuage our fears that we may be strength and hope for others. Break into our lives, rekindle our hope and breathe love into our communities that we might find new ways of supporting and upholding one another and bear witness to your inclusive love to family, friends, neighbours and strangers alike. Let us give thanks and praise to the God of our soul. Like a never failing spring of water, he supports us through all times. He defends us through the strength of his spirit living within us. He leads us in the ways of rightness. Through the life of his son, Jesus, he has shown us how to be our better selves. So let us be joyful in this day and in this world, which he has made for us. O oh God, you inspire us with the wisdom spoken by your prophets and your Holy Spirit leads us to true understanding. Let our minds ever be open to fresh thinking and new ways of understanding. Let us be watch, watchful for false witness and ever strive for right thinking. Help us to gladly proclaim your name by the way we live, in our homes, in public and throughout our community. Through our faith in you, we need not fear those who deride or threaten us. Let us face, therefore, whatever this world may throw at us with patience and tolerance and goodwill for all your creation. We pray on behalf of others, for the sick, for those mentioned in the newsletter and others known to us in our hearts which we mentioned before him. We pray for a swift recovery for Dorothy and Graham. We pray for those suffering loss or personal grief. We pray for the homeless with no roofs over their heads. We pray for those still suffering from the effects of lockdown. We pray for the victims of injustice in this state of Victoria and elsewhere. And at this time of the year, we pray for students as they face those all important exams. All these prayers we offer to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray in these worlds. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Dick, I've got a question on the running sheet. I've got here a short presentation of music. Are we having that? We're not. Okay, fine. Well, in that case, can we now bring forward our free will offerings to God?
Let's remain standing and sing our final hymn, number 179, Praise with Joy, the Lord's Creator. And now our blessing. O Lord, guide us through the coming week that we may walk in your paths with the living Christ. And may the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and always. Amen.